guys, it's Vaughn and welcome back to another episode of Housework. And today we're going to be outside refreshing my patio space. I cannot believe it's been like three years since we moved into this house and you guys have kind of seen the evolution of my outdoor backyard space. The yard basically went from being plain grass and concrete to now being a beautifully fenced in yard with a fully developed and functional patio space. I posted videos along the way and documented every phase so I will link those videos for you if you'd like to see what the patio looked like before now. But today we are getting down and dirty, we are getting creative, and we are going to DIY refresh this space. We've come a really long way and I love my patio space. I just wanted to give it a refresher for this year and try something a little bit different. So today we are going to be spray painting, mounting curtains, pressure washing concrete, all the good stuff. So this video may be a little lengthy because I'm covering every detail of this process, but if you're just here for the final look, you can go to this timestamp to see the finished results but for those of you who want to see all the details of how I refreshed my patio space to give it a whole new feel in less than $500 then keep on watching ladies and gentlemen I know this video is a little long but I know some people like to see the whole process so I promise I will make it worth your while so before we get started I definitely wanted to share kind of the starting point of the patio space so you guys can kind of see what we're building on like I said earlier I really love what we've got going on here because we definitely have come a long way this yard at one point had no fence and there was no furniture out here at all. I guess my biggest criticism of last year's setup is how the furniture was situated underneath the pergola. It was kind of like the backs of the sectional kind of facing the patio door. And what I started to realize is that there really wasn't much of a backdrop for the patio, which I think is kind of important when you have it kind of centralized and it's more of a focal point for the yard. So the main thing that I want to do is rearrange the furniture and develop more of a backdrop. The second issue that I had is that I realized that we really don't have much of a color scheme going out here. Most of the patio furniture is brown and gray so I was trying to take in some inspiration from the surrounding environment and then it dawned on me that the color inspiration was there the whole time so I noticed that there were a lot of terracotta bits here and there especially in the bricks within the landscaping so I wanted to go with that color and then some accent colors to really accentuate it and bring it out even more so with those new ideas I tried to come up with what themes I could sort of lean into to really make those colors come to life so I I thought about North African and some Middle Eastern type vibes, which felt like it could work pretty good, especially with me wanting to hang curtains. And it felt safe, right? Nothing I needed to overly commit to. I could just sample items from the different themes and just hope and cross my fingers that it would all come together. So I figured I'd replace the rug, buy some new accent pillows, and repurpose all of my pots and planters by spray painting them to match the new theme. I did still feel though that the area was missing something, so I went to at home and grabbed the last egg chair that they had available I actually bought this one right off of the showroom floor. I felt the color was the perfect match for the existing furniture that I have. And like the other furniture, I would just spruce it up with some accents later. These chairs are really popular right now, as you guys know, but it's for a good reason because they are super comfy and really adds like that zen kind of laid back feel to any outdoor space. I did feel it was perfect for me as a single seat since I do spend a lot of time back here by myself during the day. So I felt it was perfect and Sansa likes it too. So let's move on to the next phase of this project. So welcome to my garage. repurposing project I went with these spray paints that I got from Menards this first one is a stone accent and this other one is a very opaque terracotta color now these pots I thought would be really good to paint they're made out of plastic and they have a lot of texture and detail on them which makes them look like they could be clay I'm using my handy dandy rust-oleum comfort grip so that I don't get finger cramps or muscle fatigue while I'm doing all of this spray painting super cheap device and very easy to use I would highly recommend this if you know you're going to be spray painting for any period of time this is going to give you comfort and ease so as I was starting on these plastic planters I noticed a couple of things right so the first thing is that this you know stone textured paint that I'm using is actually a finisher so it's meant to be put on the finish not as a base and also I'm realizing that it's not really sticking to the plastic because it's meant to stick to paint so I'm glad I caught it in time to go ahead and stop what I was doing and remove the paint from the planter before it dried any further 
I was becoming a little frustrated so I decided to switch projects and start painting one of these other little planters that um, is a fake plant that I got from Home Goods some years back. So I'm just painting that one with the terracotta and it is gliding on perfectly so this is working out. And then I had an idea about that stone effect product so I went back to Menards and picked up some extra materials. First I picked up a stone colored spray paint that specifically bonds to plastic that I would apply firstly. Then I picked up some super cheap knee pads for all this bending that I'm doing and a new stone textured finish product to really accentuate the stone colored spray paint that I got a little bit different from the other one as you can see I figured I could use this one as a finisher on the terracotta and this one as a finisher on the stone colored pots and then I also got a matte clear sealant for all of the pots so that they can last outdoors so yeah as you can tell by now this has a little bit of a learning curve to it and I am just picking it up as I go and here I am just applying some of that stone effect to the finish on this first pot that I painted and it's coming out pretty nice. With that first one working out pretty good, I had my confidence up, so I am now ready to tackle those two very problematic plastic planters. I'm just starting off with one full coat of that stone colored spray paint. I'm gonna let that fully dry and then I'm going to go back and spray it over. Definitely felt like, especially for outside, the two coats would be safe um, before I put the sealant on there. Now I am moving on to the next set of pots that I brought in from outside. These are my favorites. I got these off of Amazon. Love, love, love them. I was just really sick of the gray kind of like a bluish gray at that. So I'm just covering the plant material with some plastic bags and I'm going to paint those that stone colored spray paint as well. I want to finish these with some of that stone texture but it has to wait until the next day because these need to dry fully before I do that. So with that I'm going to move into the backyard with some drop cloths so that I can paint those really really big planters that are out there. My vision was that I would spray paint these big ones um, the terracotta color and then I would just kind of weather and age the finish so that they looked like really big expensive clay pots clay pots of this size would probably cost me about a hundred dollars a piece I'm thinking so I see myself saving quite a bit of money by just painting these acrylic ones I'm finishing them with that stone effect to age them moving into day two you guys see my Zamunda forever shirt you know you like that today we are mounting curtains all right so I got these curtain rods from Menards, they were super affordable and that's why I got them because I needed quite a few of them and you will see in just a moment. Before purchasing, I did have to take note of the projection of the rod, right? So the clearance space between the pergola structure and the shade, I needed to make sure that there was enough room so that the rod itself could fit in between there. Once the technical stuff was done, these next steps are super easy. I had already measured out how many rods I would need for the length of the structure and I think altogether I only used six and I went and grabbed my power drill so that I could go ahead and install the brackets and then pop the rods right on there this was the easiest part of this entire project and because we're dealing with a lot of wind and little four-year-olds I wanted to install these little support brackets just for some extra hold so I quickly popped those up now we're moving on to the curtains all right I got these from at home they were $7.99 each these are the Erica rod pocket curtains in the color eggshell I love them because they look like linen and they will probably be a little easier to keep clean because they're not stark white 14 total panels is what would have been needed to completely enclose the pergola space but because I did leave part of it open permanently I only needed 12 and the 84 inch length was the perfect height we are moving into day three of this project and today Sansa and I are going to be finishing up these painting projects and potting some of the plants right now I am applying some of that stone finish effect to those tall gray pots and I'm loving the hell out of the way these turned out so good so by this point my confidence level was through the roof so so I went and grabbed some house paint and I felt like I could use a sponge to kind of age those pots that I painted yesterday by whitewashing them. My technique was pretty simple, just lightly brush the paint onto the pot and being sure to not make it look too neat and then kind of focusing on some of the raised areas of those kind of detailed designs. Now, honestly, had I stopped here with just the whitewashing, I probably would have loved the outcome a lot more, but you know, I didn't. <laughs> Um, I mean, as you can see, it looks really good. You know, it went from being flat to having some more dimension, but I want to step further and start it like spraying some of the terracotta 
paint onto there thinking I could add a little bit of red and it would make it look more aged. And I really wasn't in love with it after that, but I went with it, but I wasn't in love with it. But let me know what you guys think of the finished product. Now we're moving on to potting the plants. I decided to do this project in the garage because it was very hot this day. So I grabbed my miracle Grow potting mix and my spades and I have my drill here with a drill bit because I'm going to turn this indoor planter into an outdoor planter by placing some holes at the bottom. Definitely have to have that drainage for outdoor plants. So I'm just adding in my potting mix and transferring all of my plants. As much as I love my flowers for my patio, right? I knew that this year I was going to go with a lot more basic green foliage because that's just kind of the vibe I was feeling for this year. I went with a lot more just plain green, a lot of succulents. I just really wanted um, that Zen vibe. I just wanted pure life back there. It didn't matter if it was not a flower. But I will say this though, um, for the best of both worlds, to go for those succulents that look like flowers. And I really love the ones that I was able to select for this year. So this was everything that I was able to pick up from Menards in that one trip. And then I went back to Home Depot a couple days later and got everything else. I always unload everything using my daughter's radio flyer because it's just easier. And here you guys see me just kind of sorting out all of the flowers and plants that I bought. I went armed with a list, right? So I had kind of a general idea of how many plants I would need for each pot blah 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 but you know sometimes things change like your estimates in your head are not always you know accurate when you're actually in the space so I'm just sorting and seeing what I'm working with and I ended up with some extra flowers in the end that I was able to use in other areas that I didn't expect and you guys, I was super duper excited about this fountain grass that I found at Home Depot. Like I've been really wanting like some little bunches of wild grass in my landscaping for a while now. And this little bunch was especially appealing because it wasn't just green, but it had like a red effect, which was perfect for the kind of theme that I'm going with this year. So I actually planted two of those symmetrically in the landscaping. And here's some more reddish colored plant life going in those big stone pots along with some dusty miller. And you'll notice a theme here with all the plants that I'm choosing they all can take full sun because that is the scenario in my backyard. We have little to no shade and the sun just kind of beats down all day until dusk. So you definitely want to choose plants that are going to be able to tolerate the sun and also flourish in the sun. So all of these plants that I'm getting um, promise to grow to their full potential based on having full sun. So that's perfect for our situation. Actually, one of the plants that I chose, I think it was the seed geranium, promised to bud even more flowers if it had more sun. So I was really excited about selecting that one. All right, you guys, here we are at day five, and I have to turn my hat to the back for this one, okay? Because we're gonna be getting down and dirty today, honey. So I gotta stay hydrated for show. Sure. And this is how this all came about, right? Like I was out back noticing, you know, that I didn't really like the rug or the ground. And I'm like, it's because it's dirty, like it's filthy. So we hopped up and went to Home Depot and got this Extreme SPX 3000 pressure washer. This was literally my first time, you know, operating a pressure washer or even seeing one in action in person. So this was a really interesting experience. As you can see, our concrete needed it. And I would venture to say that this concrete has never been cleaned in 25 years. I mean, if you left it up to me, I would definitely say that. So we were eager to tackle this job. So we just started off by removing everything from the concrete patio area, right? From furniture to the little outdoor rug to everything. But this was a lot of work and it used up a ton of water, you guys. It was smelling like an aquarium out here. It was crazy. Once we had all the furniture out of the way, I wish we could have moved it even further but we'll get to that later we went ahead and soaked the ground down with some of this solution cleaner or what have you that came with the pressure washer it's a zep product and it's for driveway and concrete pressure washing i mean it was definitely sold separately but a huge huge compliment to the pressure washing process you guys this took so freaking long you guys did not tell me it took so long like when you are pressure washing it is like an inch at a time and if you try to you know, shortcut it and do more, you're just going to be wasting your time and you're gonna lose. Very satisfying though, I must admit. Like I'd watched a couple YouTube videos of guys doing this and I just got hooked. I ended up watching like 10 of them at a time. Like I went straight down the rabbit hole. But what I will say is the next time I do this, I definitely want to wear 
you know, hunter boots or some kind of rain boot or something like the guys in the videos. Because at first I didn't understand why they would wear rain boots. Like, oh, you're scared your feet are going to get wet? No, hun. They were scared of injury, okay? They were scared of being uncomfortable. Pressure washing is absolutely no joke. And you definitely have to be careful or you will get hurt. I mean, I'm filming myself, but my husband definitely helped. And this took us about five and a half hours from start to finish. But here we are the next morning and I am just blown away by the results. You guys, I could barely sleep. I was so excited to wake up and see how this ground was looking. And it is a huge difference. I mean, as a homeowner, I really think this is one of the best pieces of machinery you will ever buy. It's definitely the best 200 bucks I ever spent. And you can really use it for so many different things. So anyway, here I am getting ready to put down my indoor outdoor rug that I got from at home. This is a seven by nine, which I think is great for the area underneath our pergola. And also I got this round six foot rug that is a natural woven material. I got this thing off of Amazon, super cute. And all we're doing now is bringing all the furniture from the lawn back over to the patio space. And I'm really excited about reconfiguring everything because one of my biggest criticisms was that I didn't like the way everything was situated. So I'm really happy about that. And you guys will also see me wiping a lot of stuff off because when we were power washing, all right, and getting all that dirt and grime off of the concrete, it was going up in the air and landing on all of our furniture. That's why I was saying earlier that I wish we could have moved the furniture even further away. And so that's something that you guys need to know if you've never power washed before. You need to understand what direction you are sending that dirt and grime that you are removing. I mean, because that stuff definitely projects. So next time I'll probably just cover things with tarp. But anywho, now that the furniture is back in place, it's time to bring in the decor items that's going to bring this space to life. Pretty much all of the throw pillows I got from at home for a great price except for the red ones which came as a set of four on Amazon and all of my tabletop decor items also came from at home and the only thing I would say I would change about the patio space truthfully would be the rug because I did select that item before I selected kind of the color scheme and the pillows and things but I still like the way it turned out like I think it's okay but if I could do it all over again I would probably select something with a little bit more red in it what do you guys think and I was looking for two really nice leatherette throw Row pillows that I could use for these chairs and I was able to score this pair off of Amazon and I've just been tying the curtains back behind the pergola but let me know if you guys have any suggestions on good curtain tie backs I could use okay just a couple more finishing touches and we're done let's refresh and take a look at last year's patio space it was cute but there was a lack of color and it wasn't quite pulled together with a theme now as we fast forward to today we have a cozy space with a backdrop and beautiful splashes of color with a light theme that I could lean into to help guide my design choices but not so much to where it becomes costumey or gaudy I could still incorporate my personal style while giving my drab patio a much-needed facelift my favorite part is probably the curtains because it gives us much-needed privacy I don't know if you guys can tell, but my neighbor's window is directly behind my pergola. So we would be making eye contact without these curtains. So I love having that, but also it gives like this nice elegance, especially on days when there's a slight bit of wind. I was even able to create Anne a little flower bed for her playset area. And she absolutely loves it, especially these little garden steak figurines that we got from Home Depot. I really love the use of green back here, but I definitely appreciate my pops of flowers and my succulents here and there. So so cute you guys I was able to do a little bit of research on the types of flowers and colors that attract bees because my husband is allergic and has a bit of a phobia so it was determined that white and red flowers were probably the best choice because apparently bees can't see that color and we also went with mint you guys because apparently bees don't like it so it repels them and we like to use mint in our water and our cocktails so it was kind of a win-win and for the setup I was kind of going for a really laid-back kind of zen vibe so everything is really flowy and easygoing with an emphasis on comfort. One of my favorite additions is this Japanese style kind of woven seat cushion, which is perfect for sitting on the ground or propping your feet up. I brought out my Buddha head, which I love so much for setting a calm tone. And I really like this rug, you guys. It is super soft under the feet. And I've been at liberty to walk around barefoot a whole lot more ever since we power washed. The ground back here just looks and feels so much nicer now. So with everything nice and clean and freshened up, we spend a lot more time 
I'm out here dining. That's one of my favorite things to do outdoors. I really just wanted this area to be an extension of my interior living space. So when the weather permits, I essentially have breakfast, lunch, and dinner out here. And I often work out here as well, which is one of my favorite things to do, especially tasks like checking emails and writing, just really get to zen out and just have kind of a chill moment, refocus, recharge, and really appreciate the beauty of nature in a way that indoors could never. And really when I create videos like this is to inspire people to really enjoy their outdoor spaces because you paid for that space that came with your property. So I love to see people enjoying it. And here's to a moment of silence for my favorite part of the day to enjoy my patio. My sister was jamming. She says she loves it back here. She loves the color scheme. She was really, really feeling it. Here I am just kind of taking down the knots out of the curtains because at nighttime, the winds are usually a little bit lower. So the curtains aren't blowing all crazy all over the place. So I can definitely take them down and we can enjoy some privacy. And I love that the curtains have a bit of privacy, but they're still a little bit sheer. So you can still see shadows and auras of people. And it's just enough to shield from the bugs because of the string lights, you know, they just kind to hang out on the outside of the curtains so we did experience some bug repellent capabilities with these curtains so that was really really nice but it still allows for the breeze to come through so that we could get that chill vibe such an awesome experience you guys no regrets So that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some inspiration and ideas for your own patio space. And if you liked what you saw today, I hope you will subscribe to my channel for more housework videos. I also post family lifestyle content and beauty and hair. Also like this video if you liked it. And if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna head out to my patio and put my feet up, okay? I'll talk to you guys in my next one. Bye.